All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. This is Rosh, and you are viewing a tutorial series called FM3 Basics. And this tutorial series is how to dial in, program, and control the Fractal Audio Systems FM3. So a little about myself. My name is Rosh, and I'm a Los Angeles-based guitar player and guitar tech. I build and program guitar rigs for a lot of different clients. Some of my clients include Steve Vai, Dweezil Zappa, Melissa Etheridge, Perfect Circle, and more. So I wanted to give back to the Fractal community and uh, show some of my approaches on how to program the FM3. Uh, this series can also be used in conjunction with a previous series I put together called Axe Effects Basics. You can check that out at axefxbasics.com as well as some of the videos here on this YouTube channel. Um, a lot of those approaches can be applied to the FM3, so this is going to you can use this video series in synergy and in conjunction with that series. Um, all, a lot of the sounds and approaches are going to be the same or very similar. Um, so uh, this video, however, is going to be dealing with seamless switching. So a lot of clients of mine they always ask, is there a possible way to get seamless switching on the FM3? So the first thing we want to keep in mind is if you watch a previous video I put together on how to get seamless switching, it utilizes two amp blocks. Now, if you look at the FM3's um, possible effects, you notice that there's only one amp block. So there is a little bit of a disadvantage. There's a little bit of a hindrance right here to do seamless switching. So, for example, if we have an amp block as such, we can't have seamless switching if we change the channels. So for example, if we have the deluxe reverb right here and then we switch to, yeah, the plexi or something, we'll maybe reset this channel. Um, so if we, let's check this cab. We'll put, I don't know, 412. We'll do, sure. Just for now, just for demonstration purposes, if we switch the channel between A and B, you're gonna notice that there's gonna be this audio gap. So here's A. And here's B. Now, if we switch between A and B, you're going to notice there's this audio gap. So a lot of uh, clients and uh, users of the uh, Axe Effects as well as the FM3 always ask, well, how do we get seamless switching in there? Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you some approaches on how to circumvent that. So our goals in this preset um, and this demonstration is to get seamless switching. So obviously most presets you would want some type of clean sound. You would want some type of crunch sound and maybe some type of rhythm sound. Okay. So what we're going to do is make sure that each scene is always going to stay on the same channel as well as staying on the same cabinet block. Okay, That's super important because also switching the cabinet block will result in um, the audio gap as well. So you can hear the difference right there. So what we want to do is try to keep the same cabinet block as well, just reduce any type of, uh, you know, any type of switching that it has to do. So let's say with a deluxe reverb, uh, this approach that I'm going to show you, I would recommend using amps that um, sound good in different ranges of their gain. So a lot of the Fenders, a lot of the Marshalls, and a lot of the Voxes are really great um, amps for this because you know on the lower part of their drive signal, they have a clean sound, and then as you crank the drive up, um, it starts getting dirty, and that's a, usually a really good amp to use for this type of approach. So for the Deluxe Reverb, let's use a Deluxe Cabinet, Deluxe Verb, and we'll do this one right here. We'll use the 121 right there. And then, so we have a general clean sound. Let's check this out. Okay, cool. And we're definitely gonna wanna bring that up. So maybe a negative nine. And then let's put a reverb in here. And we'll use just like a, yeah, hall reverb, you know, the default. It's probably gonna be fine, or room. Okay, great. So. It's a pretty decent clean sound, if uh, albeit generic. Maybe we'll make this negative seven. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
go here. So this is going to be our clean sound. Okay, and then so obviously we want a crunch sound, right? So the first approach that we would use is, of course, using drive pedals to, you know, change the tone of the amp. And the cool thing is that going between channels on the drive, there is no um, audio gap. So, for example, if we make the channel B, let's say channel A is a clean boost right here, and then channel B is more of like a uh, BB preamp that has more gain, you'll notice that there's no audio gap. Right. Obviously, any type of jump or anything that you hear in terms of sound difference is really just mainly this. these two sounds need to be leveled a little bit, and of course, they change the tone. So, for example, we can have scene one be the clean sound with no pedal on. And then maybe scene two, we'll you know, add a little bit of drive, boost the input, and turn that pedal on. Oops. We want channel A. Cut the bass, add some drive, add a little bit of level. And then for our rhythm sound, maybe not the BB preamp, maybe let's use... Maybe the ruckus. Not feeling that one either. Maybe we'll try the BB again. Okay. So that is, oh, and I didn't even realize I misspelled rhythm. So apologies for that. Okay, so now what we would do is, of course, assign each scene to one of these switches. So scene one will be our clean scene. Or I'm sorry, switch one will be our clean scene. Switch two will be our crunch scene. And then switch three will be our rhythm scene. So the cool thing is, of course, you get, here's our clean, here's our crunch, and here's our rhythm. I think I want to change this one around too. So maybe we'll do Jan, Jan right feeling the vibrato channel on this. We'll try the normal channel. This one takes pedals a little bit better. Ah, I think that's a little bit better. If you have ever played a deluxe reverb, the deluxe reverb um, on the vibrato channel has the bright switch on. Most people who own the deluxe reverb will clip the bright cap and that takes pedals better. Yeah, I like that tone better. Okay, and so you'll notice that there is seamless switching between these three. So here's clean. So no switches. Obviously, we would level that out a little bit, but again, this is just demonstrating one approach to have seamless switching. So again, clean, crunch. Okay, so we didn't change the amp. All we changed was the drive. So that is approach number one. Now, approach number two uh, would be actually using the uh, scene controllers. So for example, if you don't know what scene controllers are, I do have a video going over that, but in the controllers menu right here, the scene control one and two, each scene can assign a certain percentage to anything that can have an external controller to it. So in the case of amps like this, what you would do is, of course, adjust the input drive depending on the scene. So for example, let's say in the clean scene, we like the drive on two. Now in the crunch scene, we'll just uh, maybe put a shunt here for right now. Um, in the crunch scene, let's just turn the gain up a little bit. Okay. 
Okay, so maybe around 5.45. And I like to put the number right here just so I don't have to think about it too much. And then maybe for the rhythm sound, we want to turn the drive all the way up to here. Cool. So in the rhythm sound, we want the drive at 7.8. So the clean will be at 2, the crunch will be at 5.5, and the rhythm will be at 7.8. Now, how do we turn this knob um, between each scene? That is what the scene controller's function is for. So for example, on the clean scene, which is scene 1, we want the knob to be at 2, which is, corresponds to 20%. And then in the crunch scene, which is scene number 2, we want the knob to be at 5.45 so that's like 54 and a half percent right there and then last but not least we want the rhythm to be at 7.8 so we can put 78 percent right here now all you're doing is saying hey you know please set whatever knob I assign scene controller one to be 20% in scene one, 54.5% in scene two, and 78% in scene three. So for example, we would assign this by right clicking, the source is going to be scene controller one. So what you'll notice is that in scene one, the input drive is at two, which is what we set here. In scene two, the input drive is at 5.45, which is what we set there, and then 7.8 in scene three or rhythm sound. And so it's almost like having an extra guitar tech or person actually turning, physically turning the knob for you every time you change scenes. So here is scene one. Here is scene two. And here is scene three. And you'll notice again, remember I still have this three scenes assigned to my foot controller. If I go between the three, there's going to be no audio gap. So here's our clean. So again, I'll cycle through. Okay, so you hear there's no audio gap as opposed to if we were switching channels. So this is another approach. Uh, depending on the amp that you use, you may need to also adjust the levels. So I would recommend assigning this to um, you know another scene controller, in this case maybe scene controller 2, and just tweaking that knob a little bit. I find that certain amps are really great where they, the unity remains pretty consistent no matter where the drive is, and in some other amps, usually higher wattage ones might change, such as using the Plexi Marshall. But again, I'm just demonstrating with the Deluxe Reverb, you can do this with the Voxes, the Marshalls, and other amps. Um, I find those are really, really great for this approach. So that is approach number two. We're going to reuse scene control to adjust um, the input drive on each uh, channel, okay? And last but not least, you can use, obviously you can use a combination of scene controllers and, you know, using drive pedals as well. One of the other things is that you can also use the um, input boost right here, and that can be another effective way. So what we're going to do is I'm going to remove the scene controller here, and we're going to maybe find go back to this clean sound, and then what we can do is this input boost right here, we can turn that on and off depending on which scene we're gonna be in. And if you go into the preamp section of the amp, this tells you what the boost type is and what the boost level is. So this obviously offers you a bunch of different options, okay? So there's, and some of these are based on the overdrive pedals that are in there. Um, and then some of the, and then also turning the boost level up and down. So the same thing, you can use this, either the scene controllers or just the boost itself. So for example, if we turn the input boost on, that's a pretty good crunch sound. So for example, our clean sound would be this, and then in Scene two, we want to turn the input boost on. And so what we would do is, again, assign this to a scene controller. And this time, instead of doing the scene controllers like this, if you want it to be on just in scene two, that means you turn this to 100%. 
So if we look here, the input boost on is in scene. The input boost is on in scene two, but off in scene one. On in scene two, and last but not least, you could of course also assign the boost level to the scene controller. So this one is another good approach. I like to use this a lot with the marshals um, and also some of the other high gain amps because they emulate the boost switches that a lot of those amps actually have. So for example, let's say in, um, in our crunch scene, we want the boost level to be maybe here. So let's check this tone out. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we'll I'll write here, we want this to be 7.7 .7 on the boost level. And then maybe here, we want the boost to be on. And then maybe the boost will be, you know, even higher. So let's make sure the boost is on, which is scene controller one. And then we want the rhythm sound. Let's figure out where we want it. So here it is at 17. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that there. So we'll put 17 here. So what we're going to do is make note of where the knobs are in each scene that we want. We wanted 7.7 .7 here and then 17. And then obviously with the switch off here, it doesn't matter what the boost is. So we would assign the boost level to scene controller number two. So Scene controller number one is controlling whether the boost is on. Scene controller number two is uh, telling where the boost is set. So in our case, we had the boost at like seven something. So the knob was right around here. And then the boost in scene three was 17 something where the knob was right around there. And so what's going to happen is that in scene one, the boost is off and the boost level is zero. In scene two, the boost is on. The boost level is nine. We wanted seven. So let's turn that down just a hair. And you can see that the knob goes down with it. And then here we wanted 17, which was, that's pretty close. So here is the clean sound. Here is the crunch sound. And here is the rhythm sound. So again, these three scenes are going to be seamless. So we will save that and go back to my FM3. And here's clean, crunch. So you can see that there's no audio gap in between any of these uh, amp sounds. So these are three basic approaches on how to have gapless, seamless switching. Um, uh, I'll say it once again, my, my favorite amps that do this, that respond really well to these three types of approaches are definitely the Voxes, which is the Class A amps, as well as the DC-30, the matchless or amp, um, as well as a lot of the Brit or Plexi Marshalls, as well as a lot of the uh, lower wattage fenders like the Deluxe Reverb or the Car Roamer. So um, those happen to be my favorites, but of course you can use other amps and take this approach. So that's going to cover it for seamless switching. Um, and again, there are very many approaches Obviously, you want to like experiment with different drive pedals, different amps, and how much you boost the input of the amp, as well as what type of boost, um, et cetera. Um, the sky's the limit. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. If you have any topics you would like me to cover in the future, by all means, feel free to leave a comment. Like and subscribe. Check out AxeFXBasics.com, FM3Basics.com, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. I'm